Look with me, if you will, at Ezekiel chapter 3. Understand this is a time when the, the Jews were captive. And sometimes they started acting like the folks that captured them. Instead of being that peculiar people. Just because we live in the world doesn't mean we're supposed to be of this world. We're not of this world. We sing the song, this world is not our home. Just passing through, my treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. We just can't feel at home in this world. Don't get to, don't get to feeling at home in this world. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. He's literally eating the scroll with the scriptures on it. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech and of a hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely I had, sent thee to, had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impotent and hard-headed and hard-hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine ear, and receive in thine heart, and hear with thine ears. And go, get thee to them of the captivity, unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Let's stop right there. I want to preach on the subject, whether you like it or not. Look at the verse again. He says, And go, get thee to them of the captivity, unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear or or whether they will forbear, just whether they like it or not. Father, we love you and we thank you for your word. And we just thank you, Lord, that we can look and see that people have always been rebellious. And people have always been hard-headed and hard-hearted. Father, I pray you'd help us to be very clear in our message. And that we'd even be more hard-headed. Help us, Father, to preach the truth in love, but help it to always be the truth. We love you, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Understand that Ezekiel is being told of God to go and preach to his own people. I love it. God said, I'm not telling you to go to a foreign people somewhere and you've got to learn a hard language and you're going to spend a couple of years in language school or you're going to go and have to trust a translator uh, no 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 you're going to your own people buddy these are people that you grew up with these are people that 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 you know it, they're from the same you know you have to go and learn the culture if you go to a foreign field a lot of times which i'm still trying to learn to fit in in this culture i'm i'm uh i'm not real good at that i'd be a mess in a foreign field i think but they uh God said, I'm not sending you to a foreign culture. I'm not sending you to a foreign language where you have some hard language and you can't understand the people. I'm sending you to your people. You know, sometimes I, I think we, we make it harder than it needs to be. We have God's message. I love him. He tells us just to eat the roll. Just, just eat it. Put it in your mouth. Get it down in your bowels. I said, man, I put it in my mouth. It was sweet as honey. We, we need to be constantly consuming the Word of God. We need to be getting it into us. 
We need to have the truth. We need to buy the truth and sell it not. And we need to have the truth inside us. And then we need to go to, we, th we think, well, missions, that's all about going to, you know, a faraway land. No, it's not. It's not just that. Missions really start right outside the door. You know, after we say the last amen, the pianists are playing, and, and all of a sudden we, we walk out the door. That, that, that's a great mission field right there. It's full of people in our culture. It's full of our people. Our families, our neighbors, our, and, and it's full of people that need to hear the truth today because they're not hearing the truth today. And we have the message. This is, listen, as we, as we receive God's word, this is the scroll. Eat you some of this. Take this in. Consume the word of God. Get it inside you. Make it part of you. And remember, we only have, it's not our message to preach. I, I don't have the luxury of saying, you know, I got this really cool thought, an idea for a message I'd like to preach. Now, I know that happens, but that's not right. We should be preaching what thus saith the Lord God. So as we move forward in, in our life and we start preaching what thus saith the Lord God, our message needs to be His message. By the way, God's Word doesn't need any tweaking. It doesn't need to be uh, changed or altered. By the way, no parts of it should be ignored. There's nothing to hide. Somebody else, you know, you hear some atheist, well, what do you think about this? And when this happened over in this, you know, obscure verse. It's okay, it happened. It's right there. Not running from what's happened in the Bible. I can't change history. What happened, happened. But I'm not running from it. I know God loves us. And some hard things happen in the scriptures. But we know that God loves us. We know that... Uh, God loves us like a father, and he tells us he won't spare the rod, and people get spanked all the time. If I mess up, I get spanked. If you mess up, undoubtedly you get spanked. It's God's message from his Bible. And so what, when we come, we need to have a Bible message. In verse number 10, he said, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words, all my words, he said, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears. So in other words, you're going to have to get it inside you. He said, all my words, that's what you're going to have to preach is all of it. Even the unpopular parts. And by the way, the people in our community, people in the world we live in today, they hate God. By the way, they've hated him for a long time. They just used to tolerate him a little bit better. But through the internet, you get a few internet warriors, you get a few people that are emboldened on TV, and now everybody has access to information, and, and there's just enough atheists to make a lot of noise, and even though they're, they're, it, it's still a minority. You go out and talk to people, you know that the world's not just full of atheists, but the number is growing because they, they're recruiting. And by the way, Christians are recruiting for atheists. Every time they go out and have a beer, every time they go to the girly clubs, every time they throw the wrong kind of party, every time they use the wrong kind of language, every time they forward the wrong kind of email, every time they laugh at the wrong kind of joke, every time they rip somebody off in business, every time they lie to somebody, every time they do something bad, Listen, you are recruiting for the atheist because you obviously don't really believe in the God you claim to believe in. Every time they cuddle with the homosexual crowd, you're recruiting for the atheist. Every time you, you, you make an excuse for sinners, you're recruiting for the atheist. See, nothing that's done anymore is just in some little circle. Everybody's got... 1,500 friends or whatever. And everybody looks and everybody sees. I 
I like what he said. Look at it again in verse 10. Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears, and go get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people. And you go, our people aren't in captivity. No, there's a great parallel. Our people are absolutely in captivity. Our culture today is in captivity. In captivity of the prince of the power of the air, prince of the power of this, the prince of this world. Listen, we better look out. Rulers in high places. You look around at, at the ridiculous situation with the politicians. You look around at the, uh, the, the, the news people can't tell you the truth. The politicians can't tell you the truth. Uh, it, it, the commercials don't tell you the truth. The drug makers don't tell you the truth. And you look around and our nation is absolutely in captivity. And our jailer is just a big stupid screen and people just stare at it all day. The numbers are staggering at how many hours people spend staring at a stupid television. People can't, couldn't find a book of the Bible on a bet, but can tell you every person that gets voted off an island, what's going on with some debaucherous family on TV. They know all the wicked stuff. That stuff is, is, is being perpetuated to the nth degree to our young people. Parents have to be seeking private eyes just try to figure out how people are getting access to their children. Used to, you could just put some little guard on your home computer and it'd be alright. Now, now, everybody who's above like four years old carries a stinking smartphone in their pocket. And they're Snapchatting, Twitter tweeting, posting, friending, sharing this and that. And people have access to our children that have no business having access to our children. You wouldn't let some pervert, I would hope, come into your home. But you do every time you turn on the TV. It's hard to watch anything that doesn't have a pervert on it. And then some guy that didn't know was a pervert who just went public being a pervert. That's all they can talk about. And things that used to be a shame. Now you're forced to like it. Used to, if you were a homosexual, back in the 50s, if you go, I challenge you, go home tonight and get on your Googles. Fire up your interwebs and, and go on Googles and, and uh, type in 1950s PSA homosexual. And you'll see a, per, uh, a couple of uh, public service announcements. They just warn children. It's like an infomercial. And they'll say, well, today, Timmy's going to be playing baseball with his friends. Timmy really has a good time. And, you know, he stayed a little late today. And because he stayed late, now he's going to be late for dinner and he's going to get in trouble. But there was a man there, you know, and they, they talk about how some pervert was out there at, at, the, at the park watching these kids. And then the guy gives him a ride home. No big deal. And then he comes back and, start, oh, do you play there every day? You do? Well, great. Starts giving him rides home, starts grooming him. And the next thing you know, little Timmy's life is ruined. And, and, and here's what they said. This was on public television. This was a public service announcement that they would show in schools and on television to warn the children. They'd say, and this man, Carl, or whatever his name was, he has a very serious disease. It's not a disease like, you know, that you can see on his face. He doesn't have this or that. And, uh, but it's a mental disease. See, Carl is a homosexual. And, uh, and they just warn people. Today, are you kidding? They'd be sued 20 ways by the morning time. Today, if you don't want to sell a pizza or make a cake for somebody, and here's the deal. You're hateful. You're hateful because you won't bake a pizza or a, or a cake. You're so hateful. You need to be nicer. And if you don't, we will run you out of business and hunt you down and kill you. Dude, what just happened? What just happened? I'll tell you what happened. Somebody has gotten access to enough idiots. And what used to be a shame, what used to be seen as a mental disease that would destroy lives... Now you're forced to partake in it or else. 
Well, a whole bunch of us just going to have to take the or else. Because listen, it'll never be right. It'll never be right. And there's a big push where a bunch of Christians want to booze it up. Hey, it'll never be right. And they want to legalize some pot, and that'll never be right. Hey, wrong is wrong is wrong. It'll always be wrong. And you know what, you, you know what we need to do tonight? We need to be hard-headed. We need, God told Ezekiel, he said, hey, you just stick with the word. You, you, hey, you tell them what I said. Hey, you're going to go to some people. They're hard-hearted, and they're hard-headed, and they're ugly. And they're going to be ugly right at you, and they're going to look at you. But don't you be afraid of them. I want you to be hard-headed. When you go up and look at it again, after he says, I want you to get that into your bowels, and... I want you to do all these things. He said in verse 8, Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces. Just don't flinch. And then he says, And thy forehead strong against their forehe foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint, have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Who is it? That's his community. By the way, those are people that God desired to bless. And they missed the blessing. We need to stop playing patty cake with every sin of the day that comes down. I don't care what popular preacher changes his stance on it. God hadn't changed his stance on it. And we need to be hard-headed. We just need to just look at it and don't flinch. You say, are we supposed to hate everybody? You need to hate what God hates. If God don't hate it, I'll tell you what we need to do. We need to evangelize it is what we need to do. Our problem is we're over busy like, going to play patty cake with some new sin. It's not that bad, preacher. Look, I'm playing patty cake. Stop playing patty cake with it. Headbutt it. You say, but... But they're so nice. Tell them you don't believe like that and see how nice they are. Tell them you believe God. Hey, just tell them you believe in God. That'll probably do a lot of it right there. Tell them you believe in God and you believe God and you believe God's Word and you believe you've got it word perfect in the King James Bible and you'll, your, your uh, list of friends will narrow quite a bit. I believe in being gracious. And I, 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 I do my dead level best to be gracious. I believe in as much as lieth in you, live peaceably. But that doesn't mean you have to compromise on the Word of God. That doesn't mean we have to say okay where God says okay. That doesn't mean that thou shalt sometimes when God said thou shalt not. And the things that have upset God throughout the eons still upset God. And we live in the New Testament, but you, we need to look and see the principles that are in the Old Testament and the New Testament and understand that God's never been pleased with fornicators, liars, adulterers, homosexuals, drunkards, violent people. God's, that God's not for any of that. He'll never be for any of that. Whether you like it or not. Whether they like it or not. Our problem is we go from one extreme to the other. We go right from... to... BAM! You know, it's like it's a wrestling match. Just preach the gospel. It's okay to tell people that they're wrong. You know what they're doing... They're looking you right in your face today and waiting for you to flinch and waiting for you to... They're staring you down and they're daring you to say you believe this word. They're daring you. And too many so-called Christians are just tucking their little tail between their legs and not being willing to take a stand. Hey, preach the truth in love. 
love people enough to tell them that they're wrong. If we don't tell them they're wrong, they think they're right, they're living wrong, they'll never trust Jesus Christ and they'll die to go to hell. That is not loving them. Loving somebody means you're willing to tell them the truth. You say, well, well, it's just none of my business. If their movement is recruiting your children, it's your business. If their movement is trying to recruit our children and trying to chain, take our nation, it's our business. There was a bunch of politicians years ago, there was a bunch of Christians, preachers a long time ago, we ought not be involved in politics. Yeah, that really got us somewhere good, didn't it? Yeah, let's get out of it so they can immediately start killing babies. They're now, hey, used to, it was first couple of weeks, oh, they just found out. Why is it that people who love the Lord Jesus Christ, they're a few weeks along and, and they lose their baby and we cry about it and we weep with them and we hurt with them because their hearts are broken. But other people are having babies left and right. They just go down and have them killed. And then they, they let them get killed later and later. And then you get ungodly leadership in this country that allows them all the way up to a partial birth abortion where they will literally bring the child part of the way out and stab into their head and, and, and kill them halfway out of their mama. Fully viable babies. They use today to, to kill babies. They use saline abortions. Well, isn't that nice? That sounds, that sounds a lot nicer than chemical warfare on your baby. It's saline abortion on the fetus. It's chemical warfare on a baby. We met a woman a couple of years ago that survived a saline abortion. They literally take super concentrated saline, salt water, and they inject it up inside the woman into, the, into the, where the baby is. And it literally burns the baby to death. From the inside and the outside. And then this, the baby came out, the fetus was removed. And they laid this baby that they thought was dead there. And occasionally it would jerk, jerk, move burning on the table. Kept moving, kept moving until finally one of the nurses couldn't stand it anymore and began life-saving measures. She's a real nice lady. She travels around and tells people that abortion's wrong because those are babies. And they hurt. And it's not right to chemically burn a baby to death just because it's inconvenient. Amen. In the Old Testament, you hear many stories about people that would take their babies and offer them as sacrifices to gods like Moloch. These idiots today don't even have a god. It's the prince of this world. The little G God of this world, Satan. When I worked at the nuclear pharmacy, we had a company come out, 3CI. And one day the driver came out and we had our radioactive waste. We'd let it stay there and cool down until it wasn't radioactive anymore. I, he, he'd come, I'd pull all the, the bins out, those red sharps containers, and I would you know, go out there and show him that it was indistinguishable from background and it was okay and everything had decayed. Had to show him all the decay charts and all that. We, and we, we always were talking. And I was like, what's the matter with you? He said, I'm just disgusted. They changed my route up. And now I'm picking up at a couple of abortion clinics. I go, man, that's horrible. He said, you don't have an idea how horrible it is. I said, what do you mean? He said, come here. We walked over to his truck and there were sharps containers, this tall, stacked from the floor to the ceiling, wall to wall in that truck. 
several layers deep full of nothing but dead babies. And he said, I didn't know they were going to do that. I can't do this. He took our waste that day and I never saw that driver again. He had to quit. Nobody wanted to haul around the dead babies and they just take them and they take this waste off to a big giant incinerator. And I don't know which God you think would be pleased with this, but they just incinerate all those dead babies. Bucket loads of dead babies. That's wicked as hell itself. And that'll never be right. I don't care what laws are passed. I don't care who says what. What about rape? What about incest? Hey, what about going out and telling them people about Jesus where they won't be raping and incesting them no more? It's murdering babies. And some of them survive and they're crippled up. This lady was crippled up for the rest of her life. All because she was an inconvenience to some young girl who wasn't doing what God, hey, that was up to some thou shalt not. You know what this world wants? They want, they want to break all the thou shalt nots. They want to do what they please. They want to violate God's word. And they don't dare want you to say anything about it. You don't tell me I'm wrong. God says they're wrong. And instead of Christians not having a backbone, God help us to get a backbone, get a hard head, don't be afraid of their faces, don't be afraid of the hard looks, and stand up for the Lord. That's what the Lord asks of His people. That's what He expected thousands of years ago with old Ezekiel. He said, it's your people, it's your community. I've got a message. Today, it's our community, it's our people. And God still has a message. Whether they like it or not. Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you, Lord, that you give us a message so we don't have to guess at what you want. Father, I pray that you would help us to do what you want us to do, to say what you want us to say, to reach the people that you'd have us to reach. And Father, I'm thankful for Scripture like John 15, 19 that explains very clearly to us that if we were of the world, the world would love, love his own. But because we're not of the world, but because you've chosen us out of the world, therefore the world hates us. Lord, we ought not be surprised by that. Help us to be just hard-headed enough to not give up. Lord, this world may be gone. It may be too late for much of the world. But our little corner, the areas that we can affect, I pray that you'd help us to have an effect. If people want to go to hell, let them do it having heard the truth from us and refusing it. Father, I pray you'd save some. I pray you'd help us to be effective and loving enough that you'd save a whole bunch of them. That you'd change lives. That the light of Jesus Christ might shine through our church family, through our, our homes, through our lives, through our love, through our speech, through our charity. And people might see your love. Father, help us to be effective for you. Help us to be soul winners. Help us to be a faithful witness. Help us to be good Christians. Help us to be hard-headed where we need to be hard-headed, loving, and kind when we need to be loving and kind. Father, we need you in this moment of time as much or more than any people has ever needed you throughout history. It's hard to imagine that Sodom and Gomorrah could have been worse than this. It's hard to imagine that during Noah's day, 
it could have been worse than this. Father, I pray it wouldn't get any worse here. We might see a time of revival even as we await your coming. We love you, Lord. We thank you again for your precious word and your son and for the blood that saves us. And especially for the book that tells us all about it. We thank you and we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.